What's going on guys? Danny from Slow Restoration and we're in the camper. We're in the RV, rehab, renovation, whatever you want to call it. In the bathroom working on the vanity here. So we made this custom wood top. We got our bowl here. As you can see I have a mark down inside. I centered this up left to right and it's a little off centered more towards the outside and that's that's kind of where it's comfortable. So I'm good with that. Um, now we have that hole marked. We got to drill down so we can bolt the bowl down and that is the drain also. But we also have um, the faucet so the bottom ring comes off the faucet where it goes on the countertop. So I, I that's about where I want it. So that faucet is, well let me grab it quick. So there's our faucet. So it's kind of the waterfall type. Um, and I'm big into detail, so it matters to me where that water falls when it comes out of that spigot or faucet, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to try and hit that drain. So to me, without all this set up, it's hard to hold there and get a good camera view. So we won't. We'll just show you. So about there is where it looks good to me. Um, there's room behind it all around. You have to, you know, look at it and see what's going to be practical. You need to use that outlet, so you need to be able to plug stuff in, so you can't have that bowl right up against it, obviously. And if it's too far offset, any which way, it's just not going to be pleasing to the eye. And I'm very stuck on details, so it takes me a little longer to do stuff. But regardless... We just have to center this up. We'll make a mark for that. We can pull this countertop back off. We'll go ahead and take a hole saw and drill out both of our holes. And then we can start actually bowling all this up and mocking it up for the plumbing. Center that up left to right. And again, the front to back was determined when the bowl was on there. So we have two spots marked out. We'll go ahead and get them drilled. With our two holes drilled, that worked out real, really nice. Um, we can go ahead and actually mount the faucet, or, yeah, the faucet onto this before we even uh, drop this down on back onto the vanity. So that should work out pretty good. It's pretty easy. Um, we have it laid out here. So it's got the hoses already attached. There is an O-ring at the bottom of this it seals against. There's a stud sticking down. Once all that goes through, you put this on here with a gasket and it just slips over that stud. This cutout right here is for the, the feed lines. And then there's a nut that goes on the bottom side and tightens this up to the bottom of the countertop here. So, and then there's a special wrench they give you to tighten this up. But let's go ahead and get this together and I'll show you how it looks. There we have everything tightened up. Uh, there is nothing really to center so much. Uh, this spigot with the countertop it looks like it's sticking up off there a little bit far but the bowl is fairly tall so if we look at this side you can kind of see how all that goes together again your um, hot and cold come through here kind of like that and the the long nut goes on the stud here and the provided wrench you can tighten all that up it's got a rubber washer like i said at the bottom to seal all that up and keep it from spinning and the o-ring at the top keeps water from leaking down through good deal now let's go ahead and work on getting the bowl mounted now for the bowl itself we're going to mount that and we'll center it up with the drain um, i did put some sealer at the bottom here some caulking um, hopefully that'll squish out and make a nice real little seal around the edge it'll definitely seal in between so no water will run up and run down through but Let's uh, drop, flip this upside down, drop the drain in, and we'll drop this on the countertop. Here's our finished product with the, the vanity here. We have the bowl mounted. We have the drain. This is a pop-up drain, so if you want to fill the bowl up, you push down. Push again to release. Um, faucet, we don't have the water hooked up, obviously. But all that's mounted. We do still have to attach the mirror to the wall, obviously. It's just kind of sitting there. It'll go up higher. But uh, you can also see we have our um, contrasting wall finished up there. A little bit of wallpaper. Just enough to break up that all that white. Um, probably still going to mount something over here on this wall. Just not real sure yet. There's not, just not a whole lot of room. Uh, originally, we were going to do a shelf with a towel holder. But that may not work. Um, 
But anyway, this turned out, I think, really good. Um, the black knobs on there, the black hinges. Uh, we got the baseboard around the bottom. Um, and actually, I didn't show any of this yet, but we did get all the trim and baseboard put down, even back into the bedroom. That's all done. We walk around here. I did do a transition strip here also. Um, covers up that piece of aluminum a little bit, I think. Working on our transition strip here, and I think I came up with the best possible solution, at least what I can figure out. Um, we got this color match transition strip that has a little bit of a leg down. Um, it's got this strip that you actually attach. You can screw whatever, however you want to. They leave that up to you. You can attach this. And then this stuff actually has a groove with some fingers off of it. So once you get this attached, you line this up kind of like that and snap it down to place. It does lock pretty good. Um, there is a big gap here. I have the slide actually pulled out. It's a little easier to work that way. But once the slide is back, once I finish this section up, I'll show you. We'll jog the, take the slide all the way back out and it actually hugs pretty tight against the floor and I mean, it looks pretty good. I, I definitely like it. This is color matched. It's the same brand, same color, Doxide Hickory Matrix from Shaw Flooring. So, so far the best possible solution I figured. Uh, we are using these self-drilling screws. They are one inch long. I wish I had some three quarters, but the one inch do seem to work. This slide, I don't know if you can see there, it is tapered back and it's fairly thick. So if you run your screw at a really hard angle, it doesn't come through the bottom. Like right there, I'm running my hand through and it's not coming through the bottom. So let me finish this up. We'll trim our section and we'll get snapped down like that one. With that piece attached down, um, and this piece cut the to length. Let's see if we can get that actually snapped down in. Like I said, it does have a profile there that inter interlocks into this. This is slightly flexible, so it shouldn't be too bad. We'll get it lined up on the other side here. Line these two tongues up. There we go, and slip it together. That should get tighter as we go. We'll just kind of work our way down here, snapping that in place. Snapped into place. Let's go ahead and run that slide out. So that's what it looks like. I think that's the best option. You can't 100% hide that seam, but there's seams in the floor too, so it's not, not really that noticeable. So I'm actually working on this kind of fake beam here, right here, and I wanted to take this trim off because as it stands, as you can see there's a gap there. You can't see it looking straight on and it's not that big a deal, but I just realized the next row up, these pieces were in the way. I took a, a pry bar and actually pry these off and there's the hidden screws I was looking for. So there's a screw there, screw there, two on this end, two in the middle in that cap, and two on the other end, which this holds these pieces on, <clears throat> excuse me, also. So I think now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this first strip off, just pull this trim off. As you can see, it, it comes right off once you have those screws loose and put this right on the slide um, frame itself. All right, so I got a big, I got these pieces off and right here, as soon as you pull them off, they actually fall right off as soon as you take screws off and they hold this stuff on. You can see that pops right off now and it's right down to the plywood. That's exactly what I wanted to start with and put that stuff up. So that's, that's awesome. Lesson learned, very easy to do. You just got to know what to take off first because those caps, overlay over this so i was trying to pull this off and it just wasn't working and because these were screwed on it wasn't allowing them to come off it felt like everything was going to break so i just kind of gave up on it but now we figured it out and with all that off 
like I said, it's right down to the plywood. So now we have a blank canvas for the whole top there. We have all of our slats laid out here. Um, and we're going to get to work here. We'll probably set up a time lapse. It's pretty easy. We're going to run a strip across. And then we're going to stagger joints for the next one. And so on and so forth. And build up on that. And it'll kind of resemble a uh, beam. Like an old wood beam. Uh, at least have that look. Uh, these are a little bit lighter than the cabinets, but it'll kind of tie all these colors in and give that kind of rough wood look that we were going for. Not in the whole camper, uh, at least for right here. I think if this works out and we have enough left over, we're going to add this in the bedroom and possibly a little bit in the bathroom also. But for now, let's get set up and we'll get to work on this. actually really nice um, it's kind of that old barn wood but it's it's yeah it's segmented it's got a really nice look to it like I said it does tie the cabinets in it's not quite the same color but it ties the floor and the cabinetry it flows pretty nice I think so after that that's all installed it looks really good like I said it, it ties stuff in gives that kind of a rougher finish look that we were going after. Now we didn't want too much of this in here, but uh, just enough of it. And on these columns, we still have to touch up the very top of it where that, that old piece overlapped it. But we did do, we turned these slats uh, the opposite way and nailed four pieces on here. And that's the, the finish off. Um, this stuff, the pillar here or column stuck out past it. Now with these on, it sits flush and it just adds a little bit of detail. So we did one here with a rough edge here and we come down to this side. We did another one over here and again we have to touch up that, that paint a little bit but that's no big deal. Um, next is, like I said, painting all these doors and getting them on. Um, and then it's just a matter of placing furniture back in here. I did get my wiring problem here figured out and as you can see, maybe you can see, I drilled a third hole so we're going to do a third recessed light which I think looks good. It's centered over the window perfectly so that'll work out. That beam I was talking to you about is actually right there. So I just took a drill bit and drilled through this way and as you can see we're through now so we'll take our wire, feed it through, drop it out of this hole and then we'll snap this light in, transfer that wiring over here. We'll do all of our wire connections here, but we'll pretty much take these two lights, snap them into place. The wires coming out of this third hole, connect everything, and then pop that third light back up in there. But easy fix. I uh, just had to find a solution and it did take a couple days, but I got it. Next time, this thing should be all but finished up if not completely finished because it's getting really close now. Um, we do have, like I said, a couple of trim pieces to put up and I think we're going to use, we are going to use some more of this barn wood on those trim pieces as they go back up to kind of take this detail into some other room. So in the, in the uh, bedroom and in the bathroom also, just not much of it, just some slight little pieces to continue and keep the theme consistent throughout the camper. So until next time, thanks for stopping by. Have a good day. Now time to tackle this back wall. As you can see, I pulled that strip off the center. Uh, we have some eighth inch Lawan sheeting that we ripped down to three and a half inches. So we're gonna make shiplap for this whole back wall. So let's go ahead and get set up. We'll start popping that on. 